Welcome. This is a training for our ENA IELTS encoder. My name is Tim Sasserchi, and I'm one of the technical experts here at Pepper and Fuchs. And this is going to be for, again, the IELTS encoder with our Alan Bradley PLC using IELTS masters from either Pepper and Fuchs or Alan Bradley. So let's get started. So here's the basic setup of our system. We have the IELTS master. We have our Ethernet IP network connected back to the Allen Bradley PLC. Typically, it's a compact or control logics PLC. And then also our encoders. You can have one encoder from IO-Link connected to each IO-Link port of the master. So typically, that means up to eight IO-Link encoders per IO-Link master, depending on the model. So this is what it looks like. This is the add-on instruction for configuration. We've, we've made versions such that it can use, be used for anything above RS Logics or Studio 5000 version 16 and higher. And when you configure it, you can configure the resolution, the number of turns, the direction, set points, and temperature limits. You can also set a preset on the encoder, and that will make the current position equal to the preset value immediately. And then of course you can read all the diagnostic data that you want. There's up to 50 different parameters that can be read out of the encoder that can lead or assist you with preventative predictive maintenance schedules. So this is kind of step by step. We're gonna name the encoder, whatever you like. Just make sure it's unique. This will be the instance of that instruction. We're now gonna configure the IO link port number that the encoder is connected to. And it'll be typically one to eight, or zero to three, depending on the model. And then the block type. Because the add-on instruction can be used with multiple different IO-Link masters and manufacturers, we put a number of zero in there for the ICE-1 IO-Link master, a one for the Allen Bradley flavors, and number two for the ICE-2 IO-Link masters. And then this is the hard part. So you're gonna configure the message instructions. This is kind of what the uh, add-on instruction uses to actually send the read and write parameters. So I'll show you with a couple of screenshots here. So the first connection, you're gonna put a service code 4B in there for block type zero and two, and a 4D for block type one. You're gonna make sure that the source and destination arrays are the same name as the source and destination in the add-on instruction, very important. Connection two, again, block type zero and two, you're gonna make 4C, and block type 14E. Again, make sure that the source and destination arrays are the same in the message and in the add on instruction. And then lastly, under the communication tab of both of them, make sure that you set the path, right? So if it's an ICE 1, point to the ICE 1, ICE 2, or Alan Bradley, point to those as well. That's all you have to do for the configuration. But it's important because if you miss any step, then it's not going to read and write correctly. And then let's look at the preset specifically, along with some of the other trigger commands. So the preset, for example, you'll see trigger underscore preset on the upper right corner is gonna be taking the data from the preset variable and writing it to the encoder. So if you want it to be zero, no problem, or you can preset to any number you like. The parameters themselves are broken into three parts called identification, configuration, and diagnostics just to make it a little easier to read and write all of the different parameters. Let's take a look at what they are. These are all of them. It's more than 50 there. So identification is typically talking about what type of device it is, how fast is it running, what IO-Link version, and so forth. Configuration, this is where you'll do the resolution, total resolution, direction, preset, and so forth. And then, of course, under diagnostics, you're going to see kind of status and other predictive maintenance schedule information. Quick look at the timing diagrams, quite very simple on these trigger commands. You raise the trigger up, the busy will come on, and then you'll either see done or error, if there's a success or a failure. And then there's two additional add-on instructions for the process data. So once it's configured properly, let's make sure that we can read the process data correctly as well. So the reason there's two versions is because if the IO link master is configured as an integer array of data, then you want to use the, uh, the add-on that ends in underscore int. And of course, if the add-on instruction has sint in the name, then that'll be used with an IO link master with an sint array 
data type. Okay, so let me show you now in the PLC, I'll just kind of run through this all and uh, show you how to get it done with the Rockwell RS Logix 5000 software. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to use the add-on instructions for our uh, ENA IO link encoder. So a few prerequisites before I get started. Number one, I've imported the uh, IO link add-on instructions, one for configuration, one for my process data if the data is int, process data s int. I've also configured and added my two IO link masters to the Ethernet tree, ice one right here. Um, for this example, I've configured this for of type s int array. And for the ice two IO link master, I've also configured this for type int array. Now, one other prerequisite is that in here, the process data, I pre-labeled all of the points um, where the process data will start for each port, okay? I've done this for the ICE 1, and I've done this for the ICE 2. Now, you can easily do this with one of our tools, and I'll show you that real quick. So if you go to our website for the IO Link Master here, the ICE 1, go to the Software tab, you'll find the description files. So when you uh, import these into your program, it will label all the tags for you. Very cool, it's a video on how to do it in there. The ICE 2, we've done it even a little better maybe. It's, um, it's under the configuration, it's actually under the software tab, and it's called Ethernet IP Tag Description Generator. It's pretty cool as well. Just put the tag name in there, you can import it. Um, and the last prerequisite here is I'm gonna use port one on both of these IOLink masters, and I need to disable byte swapping. Okay, so for this ICE2 here, I want to put no byte swapping and no byte swap and then save it. And you'll be good to go. Okay, let's start with the configuration of the encoder. So I've added a new rung and I'm going to add my encoder process IO link master block here. So you just name it, ENA, and whatever you want, just make sure it's unique. You right click and here create, and you're good to go there. Now, I just need to set up these other variables. Call them, I'll kind of call them the same name as what you see in the block here. All right, so same thing. I'm just gonna right click, new, create for each one of these. All right, created those five variables. And now I need to set up my two connections here. So I click on connection one, and the first one I'm gonna do is the ICE-1 IONLINK master, which is 4B. And the source and destination are these two variables right here. Source, destination, and then under the communication tab, I point to the ICE-1 IONLINK master. Same thing for the connection two. You'll notice this is 4C in the manual and uh, source destination again point to the ice one and then good to go now i'm going to use my encoder on port one and the block type is zero because that's the, uh, the parameter for the ice one that should be good to go just assemble the rung and then one other thing let's add the rung for the process data so go to the process data now for the uh, IO link master ICE1, it's of type sint, so I want this version. ENA ICE1 sint, let's call it. All right, and then input data. For the first one, I scroll down to ICE1 here and look for X1 input data star, because I'm going to do that for the first port. All right, I plugged my encoder into my IO link master on port one. One other thing I mentioned uh, is that make sure all the ports of your IO link master are configured for IO link. So now I spin the encoder, you can see it move. And let's say I want to do a preset on this. I put in whatever preset value in this variable right here, let's call it 100. 
and then I would go up in the function block and hit preset and immediately the position goes to 100 and it will count from there. I can also, if I want, adjust the resolution or total resolution here. So if I wanted to make this 100 and a 10 turn encoder, something like this, and you would clear the preset and perform the right operation. You're done. You can see the standard resolution went down to here. And maybe I do another a preset here. And uh, you're good to go. And that's all you got it. And then here's all your parameters for identification, configuration, and diagnostics. Now let's look at the ICE2 IO Link Master. Now, this configuration block, I can basically just reconfigure this for the ICE2 directly. So all I do is go into connection one and two. 4B is correct here. And I point to the other IO link master. Even though this is not required, I will still do it anyway. And then I also change the block type to two. OK, that's all you have to do. And now I can read all my parameters in on the encoder if I like here. And I can even do a new preset on the encoder on the ICE2 IO link master. Now, this was not correct, right? So now I need to add the other IO link uh, process data block for the integer type and point to the right variable. So let's do that now. So I'm going to add the rung. I'm going to add the other process data block called int here, process int. I'm going to call it ice2. Now, this is going to point under the ice2 IO link master. And you can see PDI 0 and 1 starts right here. OK. And that should be all we have to do. Now we assemble the rung. Let me make this. OK. So now we spin the encoder, and the data is right there. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact us. Don't forget to like, share, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay tuned for our next video and have a great day. Thank you.